Shri Guri Vashnav Guru Parampara Ki Jai, Shri Sri Daoji Gopal Ki Jai, Grantara Shri Mad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Gaur Premanande. So as I mentioned last night, I want to discuss further from Sri Mad Bhagavatam with regard to its various origins. We have been discussing Bhagavatam. We went from really the beginning up uh, well into the eighth chapter of the first canto, prayers of Queen Kunti, where we concluded our last discussion. And in the context of that, of course, we we learn of various uh, speakings or origins, if you will, of the Bhagavatam. We have the composition of the Bhagavatam by Vyas and the three introductory slokas that are attributed to him. We find um, immediately after that the inquiries of Sonaka and the Rishis inquiring as they do to Sutta Goswami who begins to recite the Bhagavatam. So uh, there's another origin, another speaking of the Bhagavatam. Of course, in the context of his speaking to them about the, the contents of the Bhagavatam, the essence of the Bhagavatam, he offers his respects to his guru, his Shiksha guru, uh, Sukadeva Goswami, who, uh, in whose assembly, uh, in the assembly where he was present, uh, uh, Sukadeva speaking to Maharaj Parikshit, Sutta Goswami was also present, and that's where he heard the Bhagavatam. So, another origin, if you will, or speaking of the Bhagavatam on the part of Sukadev. And in the context of explaining the essence uh, of the Bhagavatam, it's uh, being the Puro Dharma and answering thereby uh, the various <coughs> questions posed by the sages in the first chapter. Sutta Goswami answers them, speaks about the essence of the Bhagavatam, explains us as Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam, and so on and so forth. And the sages ask further about this extraordinary book, the Bhagavatam that Sutta Goswami has glorified as the remedial measure, the very uh, the veritable presence of Krishna in the Kali Yuga, in the midst of his absence, the departure of Krishna like the setting of the sun hmm? and the rising of a new sun, if you will, the setting of the moon, the rising of the sun of Srimad Bhagavatam. Hmm? How's that verse? Krishna svadhamu pagate dharma jnana nivisaha kalo nasta desha mesha puranar kodanodita. So we are introduced to the idea that the Bhagavat is a literary incarnation. And this after some discussion of the various incarnations uh, and Krishna as the source of incarnations, and so on and so forth. All this, again, in uh, in answering the initial questions of the sages, who then ask for more. Hmm? And, you know, where did Sukadev get it from, and so forth. So there, there's the story of, hmm, of uh, Vyas, and Vyas's enlightenment on the part of Narada, which is another speaking of the Bhagavatam. Hmm? And uh, so all these have been mentioned and after thoroughly playing out Vyasa's enlightenment on the part of um, Nard, the, which resulted in his final literary contribution that we call the Bhagavatam, Shumad Bhagavatam, uh, <clears throat> further inquiries uh, were made and the subject of uh, Parikshit Maharaj hmm, and how he came to hear the Bhagavatam from Sukadev, the son of Vyas. Vyas imparted it to Sukadev, Narad to Vyas, Vyas to Sukadev. This is the Nigama Kobotaro Galitam Falam, the tree of the Vedic knowledge in which the fruit hmm, is uh, Galitam Falam. In one sense, it means it's handed down carefully from branch to branch without being bruised. The implication of which is, the, you must be heard through the parampara system, as Prabhupada would refer to it. Uh, so, Vyas to uh, Narada Vyas, Vyas to Sukadev, hmm. 
and Sukadev to uh, Raj Parikshit, and how did Parikshit get in the situation? I mean, he was the emperor of the world. I've likened it to, you know, the president of the United States decides to go to the bank of the Mississippi and uh, and uh, and ask the real questions of life, the big questions of life. Ke ami kene jartha patroi, as Sanatan Prabhu voiced them to uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Who am I? Why? Why I have to suffer? Hmm? So on and so forth. And so many people come. The scientists come. The philosophers come <laughs> uh, from all over to give their answers. And then uh, a young naked boy appears on the scene who would appear uh, not to be well-schooled and to know the answers and so forth. And of course he he speaks, and that, that's the kind of event it was. So the sages were curious, like, this is extraordinary. The emperor, Parikshit Marsh, uh, how did he, you know, c- get to this situation and so forth? So the, st- the, inter- the, the narrative, if you will, because within the context of Parikshit Marsh's life, we have Krishna's presence hmm? and his protecting Parikshit Marsh in the womb. Hmm? Uh, and so the story is told, and uh, the, the, uh, the uh, Uttara is, is glorified, the mother of Prikshit, from whom we get, of course, the Brihat Bhagavatamritam, hmm? the essence of the Bhagavatam, spoken by Uttara, who asked by whom? By, uh, well, Uttara asked her son, Prikshit, what happened in that assembly? I couldn't get up close. Uh, and now he had only seven days to live, in in the, the course of which Sugadev enlightened him as to the, uh, uh, the the real purpose of life by speaking the Bhagavatam. with him. And now he had even less time to live. And and uh, uh, Uttara, his mother, wanted to know what did he say. <laughs> and so, in a very short short period of time before passing, uh, based on the curse that he would die in seven days, he spoke Brihat Bhagavatam Rita, another speaking of the Bhagavatam, uh, which, of course, Sanatana Goswami has brought to light and commented upon um, hundreds and thousands of years later. <clears throat> uh, so, at any rate, in the context of asking, as the sages do, about uh, Raj Parikshit, the, the 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 narrative of Krishna Lila really begins in the first canto, and and Uttara is glorified, and uh, and Draupadi is glorified, who comes in and mitigates uh, with uh, uh, the uh, situation concerning Ashvatama and how he should be dealt with. After all, he tried to kill the uh, Prikshit in the womb, and uh, but he's a Brahmin at the same time, and. Bhima wants to slay him and Draupadi wants to spare him and Krishna allows the debate to go on and brings out the good qualities of Draupadi and so forth and, and Kunti enters into the scene. Hmm? As he's finished with this, he's about to go to Dwarka and she makes many beautiful prayers, all of which we heard are and constitute, in essence, they're full of pregnant with Siddhanta, so, but in essence she's trying to get him to stay and not to go to Dwarka. Hmm. But he's the independent Bhagwan and so forth. And so anyway, we concluded there. Um, but I wanted to skip ahead for the moment and just kind of plumb the depths of this idea of the different origins of the Bhagavatam. And so we, we have, as we've described, Sutta Goswami speaking to Shonaka, Sukadev speaking to Sutta and Parikshit Maharaj at the same time in the audience when Parikshit was enlightened. We have Vyas schooling um, Sugadev. We have Narada teaching the Bhagavad to Vyas. And uh, somewhere on here there's Brahma speaking to Narada also. Hmm? But tonight we're coming to the point in the second canon, the ninth chapter, where Krishna spoke to Brahma. Here's a, our kind of beginning of beginnings. Hmm? Brahma speaks Four essential verses, Chatushloki. Uh, it's said and thought to be expanded uh, from there, and in an ongoing 
sense, hmm? as we are seeing. And so it doesn't stop with Sutta Goswami and um, and uh, the sages. Read Bhagavatamrita is another, as I say, and it really, as far as we know, it seems to have manifested thousands of years later. Although Sanatana attributes it to a time quite, uh, quite, quite distant and and, and ancient. Hmm. Uh, and of course, as much as we understand Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would be no different from Krishna for these reasons, um, uh, for many good reasons, the book Chaitanya Bhagwat has been dubbed the Chaitanya Bhagwat, hmm? uh, arguably an extension of the Srimad Bhagavatam and its author, Vrindavan mm, uh, has been dubbed the Vyas of Chaitanya Leela. So the spirit of this is that the story of the life, the love life of God, the emotional, spiritual, private love life of God, the, this is the essence of all the sacred texts, Hindu texts. It's, it's, uh, it's presented most concisely and completely and explicitly in in, in what's called the Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam means uh, the, 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 the beautiful you know, story of the personality of God. And she may also be taken to refer to Radha. So this, the, uh, it's about uh, Radha's love for Krishna, uh, ultimately. This is a book that Mahaprabhu embraced to his heart. Mm-hmm. Uh, he invoked the book in, in teaching others uh, particularly, he invoked it in teaching to Prakasananda Saraswati. There we find the Chatur Shloki of Bhagavatam is recited by him. It's found in two places in Chaitanya Charitamrita. It appears at the very beginning of Chaitanya Charitamrita in the Adi Lila. Hmm? Chatur Shloki, four verses of Bhagavatam. There are four verses, and there are two verses that introduce those verses. So sometimes put together as six. Two verses introduce them, summarize what will be said there, and then the four verses come. And those six verses are prefaced by another six verses of Brahma's inquiries. Hmm? And so this chapter Shloka, at any rate, as I said, is found first in Chaitanya Charitamrita in Adi Lila, later in Madhya Lila. But in Adi Lila, it comes in the context of Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami explaining Guru Tattva. You know, he opens his book with the words Vande Gurun. Gurun is in the plural. It can be taken to be a reference to the, a plurality of gurus in one's life. Sometimes the plural is used also a, in, uh, in deference or out of... Uh, um, uh, respect. Hmm? And certainly the guru is owed all kinds of respect... Uh, being the representation of Bhagwan in the world, custom kind of tailored fit to uh, meet our uh, necessity. But it's apparent that um, he is referring to a, a, a plurality of gurus because in his explanation of the Guru Tattva, he speaks about Guru, uh, Diksha Guru and Siksha Guru. Hmm? two types of gurus, and he speaks about how both of them are one in that they are manifestations of Krishna. So guru is one, a manifestation of Krishna, in various uh, forms at different times, catch the attention of different uh, devotees, and maybe two even or so or more in one uh, devotee's life. Uh, and uh, So he addresses that. At some length, this is how he begins his his book, Chaitanya Charitamrita. He explains six principles: the, the five of the Panchatattva, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, God Himself, Swayam Bhagavan, His expansion, Nityananda Prabhu, His incar- incarnation, Advaita. Hmm? Incarnation means coming to the world. Hmm? Characteristically, the expansion is for Leela in the Parvyom, in the spiritual world. Avatar is for coming into the world. Hmm? It's Advaita, as the, as the Mahavishnu, and the Shaktis. The Jeev Shakti as uh, Srinivas, Srivas Thakur, and the Antaranga Shakti, the Surup Shakti, internal Shakti of Bhagavan. 
as Gadadhar. Maya Shakti, of course, is not mentioned. <laughs> she, the Bhagavatam teaches, stands at a distance with respect, like a shadow. Hmm? Ashamed of herself, although she shouldn't be, but she is nonetheless, of her thankless task of uh, serving as considerable negative impetus for the jivas to move in the direction of Bhagawan, and depicted as she is sometimes with a trident and poking them with the threefold miseries. As I say, negative impetus. And sometimes we, Krishna, Krishna karma we spoke about last night, he arranges that for us to, to prod us along further in our devotional lives as well. So, to take that in stride. Um, but with regard to the invoking of the uh, Chatur Shloki of the Bhagavatam in Chaitanya Charitamrita in Adi Lila, in the context, as I say, of explaining Guru Tattva, what Krishna Das Kaviraj wants to say there is that the Guru is Krishna and he, he resides within and he enlightens from within, but he appears at the same time without as the Mahant, as the saint, as the sadhu. Hmm? He's within, but he appears without to, to kind of amplify what he has to say, what he has to offer, to take an active position. Actually, the in antaryami, the inner guide, Krishna within, Paramatma, God within, if you will, the antaryami means the indwelling hmm, God, it tends to be rather inactive more of a witness, hmm? not getting involved. But when he manifests outside as the guru, we find he's very active and very much involved. Uh, indeed, uh, Prabhupada said, I came to your country as an aggressor. Hmm? So, uh, <laughs> kind of a, a, aggressive love, real caring. After all, guru is also considered to be the most prominent manifestation of Krishna's uh, mercy, he's Kripa Shakti, hmm? where he extends himself that much more and actively goes after the the uh, the jiva. Again, within the heart, the position of, of of the Godhead tends to be inactive. The witness, he gives the sanction. Hmm? He may not sanction. We're dependent upon that. Hmm? Um, the, the, the ultimate uh, causal factor amidst other relative causal factors. It's kind of a compatibilist worldview with regard to free will. The jiva has some will, but it's not independent. In order for its fulfillment, it's dependent upon the sanction of, of the Godhead and so forth, just like you might have seeds and plant them. You know, but if you don't get rain, then they won't grow. Hmm? This example is given in, uh, by Bhaldi Bidjibhushan in Vedanta Sutra commentary of his Govinda Basham. So, inside anyway, in the heart, he does something that constitutes activity and kind of moving out of his, his uh, position of equanimity, equality, balance, witnessing, and so forth. Uh, that's very extraordinary. He manifests as the Guru. He said... In the language of Chaitanya Charitamrita, Anda Brahmite Kon, Bhagavan Jeev, Guru Pai Bhakti Latavij. That the Jiva is wandering throughout the universe. It means through different species of life, transmigrating, reincarnating, and so forth. And by the grace of God, implied here, the dwell, dwelling within, he becomes lucky. <coughs> Because God brings him in touch with the Guru. The Guru is the good luck of the Jiva, the Sadhu. Moving under the influence of Krishna's internal Shakti in the world hmm, is not under the law of cause and effect of karma, and he creates the good fortune of others by bringing them within the fold of the Surup Shakti. Bhakti is constituted of Surup Shakti. He imparts Bhakti. She imparts Bhakti. Hmm? This creates the good fortune of the Jiva. It means also that 
This is not something that could happen on one's own strength. It's not something where you could put, it's not a formula where you could put so much money in the machine and you would get uh, the product out. Hmm? This is the way of karma. If you do something, you get uh, the result. And you could calculate that and how to get a good result and there are texts explaining that and rituals that uh, correspond with the texts and so forth. And if you do it all right, you have to get the right result. Hmm? But bhakti is not like that. Hmm? As Krishna is independent, bhakti is independent. She's residing in the heart of great devotees and they circulate around under her influence and touch others. This is what we call good luck in uh, Gaudiya language. Hmm? Bhagya. He becomes fortunate. How is that? That Krishna in the heart brings him in touch with the Guru and the Guru then brings him in touch with Krishna. Hmm? And so this... This God in his heart manifests as the Guru, hmm? brings him in touch with the Guru Tattva, hmm? and the Guru instructs him in such a way that he can go systematically to understand and meet, really not the Paramatma, but Bhagwan face to face. We can say the Guru is carrying yam shama sundaram achinta guna sarupam premanjana charita bhakti bilochanena. We are not, of course, devotees of the Paramatma, that is a manifestation of our Lord Bhagwan. Mahaprabhu says, Nadanam, Nadanam, Nasundarim, Kovitam, Ba, Jagadish, Kamaye. I have no use. Nanam, Janam, Sundarim, Kovitam, things of the world hmm? that are desirable from a worldly perspective. I have no use for those things. And we're just interested in those things. And the Lord that presides over those things as a witness and a sanction. Hmm? really therefore has no place in my life. Hmm? What desire do I have? I have desire for bhakti. And it's unmotivated, it's uninterrupted, hmm? and it's bringing in, me in touch with the Lord of my life, the Pranishwar. Hmm? In the case of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Swami Bhagavan Sri Krishna. It might be Ram, it might, might be Narasimha, like it is for different devotees, but for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it's, it's Krishna. He says, I want to become a maidservant in the house of Nanda Maharaj. Ayi Nanda Tanuja King Karam. So, the, arguably, the Paramatma is displaced. This is kind of just figurative language we're speaking. And, and Swami Bhagwan is now takes, takes his seat in the heart. And that devotee moving under that influence then hmm, who gives bhakti becomes a manifestation of Swami Bhagavan Sri Krishna in Gaudi Sampradaya. Rajendra Nandan. Therefore, Kira Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami identifies the Guru Sakshat Prajendra Nandanam. It doesn't say the, the Lord of the Heart, the Antiyami, the witness. <laughs> no, he's directly Prajendra Nandan Krishna coming before us. Prajendra Nanana has arranged this, in other words, and said, I can be found here in, 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 in a way that I cannot be more readily found elsewhere. Hmm? Pay attention here. So, this is a very generous uh, uh, dispensation, but Krishna Skabirash wants to make the point, don't underestimate the presence of the Guru in our life. This is Krishna himself coming to us. Hmm? Uh, we, you know, we argue, of course, or explain Krishna, the Guru is not Krishna, but he is really representative of Krishna, should be seen, as I'm saying, as the most prominent manifestation of divinity in our lives that can bring us into, um, into a... Um, a relationship with Krishna, hmm. the Prem Prayojan, Taste Bhakti Rasa. Hmm. So, his, he wants to say, his appearing in life is an extraordinary event, and then he wants to give some examples, Krishna Skabirash Goswami, from the Shastra to support his point. 
he'll say, what is the verse from the Gita? Tesham satata yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam tadami buddhi yogam tam inamam upayantite. Hmm? He'll quote from Bhagavad, acharjamam vijaniyat navamanyeta karichit. His statement, Bhagavatam says, uh, Krishna speaking to Uddhava, you should know that I am the Acharya. Hmm? That the Acharya is me. And he should be regarded as such. Uh, the Gita verse I cited, he's, uh, he, 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 Krishna says, Dadami buddhi yogam tam. I give the, the knowledge by which they can come to me, those who worship me. I'm the giver of that knowledge. As much as the Guru is the giver of that knowledge, the Guru is Krishna. Hmm? But then he cites this Chatur Shlok of Sumat Bhagavatam. Hmm? And one of the reasons that he cites it, it appears, is that it really is a good example of Bhagavan giving what we call Antar Darshan, interior Darshan. Hmm? Brahma saw Krishna. But if anyone was standing next to Brahma, they wouldn't have seen Krishna. But Brahma saw him internally, as if externally. Just like, let's say, you come before the deity and the deity gives you darshan and speaks to you. It's not that everybody there will hear that. There's another instance which he'll come before you and he'll speak and everybody else will hear it. Whatever they will understand or not, or to what extent, that, that is another thing. Like in the manifest Leela. Hmm? And this, of course, is our ideal to enter into that. We find this uh, kind of antardarshan or samadhi is uh, not given a lot of uh, uh, emphasis in Brihad Bhagavatamrita on Tapalok, for example. It's a little bit different than Brahma's situation. The Tapalok is just below the Satyalok. Gopu Kumaras in Tapalok and uh, uh, the sages, the, the Chattusan Kumar, Kumaras are there, which reminds me, I should say, Bhagavatam also speaks about the Kumaras hearing the Bhagavatam from Sankarshan in the third chapter, hmm? third canto, ninth chapter, another speaking of the Bhagavatam. And some commentators, not Gaudiya commentators, also identify four verses from, uh, from that section as the Chattur Shlok side point. But at any rate, in Tapalok, this uh, Gopu Kumar is there and he hears that, that, that Narayan has gone somewhere. He wants to go to have his darshan and the sages say, why go anywhere? He can have his darshan right here, do samadhi. They touch him. He enters into samadhi. They go into samadhi and then they appear. The, the, the form of the shringa appears. The form of vaman appears. They get so absorbed internally in meditation, Lord, that they take on the qualities of the Lord and appear like Him. And the Gopu Kumara is seeing this, he's fascinated. They touch Him, He goes into Samadhi, and there He's having the Darshan. So at least not, it, as it ends up, He's not quite fully satisfied with that. Hmm? Hmm. There's something more than that. Hmm? Uh, to meet Him outside, face to face. This is the experience, of course, of Bhakti. So from there He goes, of course, to Brahma Lok. He becomes a Brahma and so forth. and uh, eventually he finds his way into Vaikuntha hmm. and then of course Dwarka and Ayodhya Dwarka and Golok and the Brajlila back where he started and it's all here hmm. and um, so this is a non-mystical a mystical but a non-mystical mysticism if you will the, myst- the internal darshan is rather mystical hmm. the external darshan is Ostensibly not, but it's super, super mystical. <laughs> so, uh, at any rate, Brahma is an example of Krishna speaking from within and giving Siksha, hmm? the original guru. So, he cites the Chatur Shlok, arguably, uh, for, to give, give support to his statement that the original guru is Krishna. He appears in many forms, particularly speaking about the Siksha guru who gives instructions and Brahma gave instructions to, or excuse me, Krishna gave instructions to Brahma in his heart. Bhagavatam begins this way, Tene Brahma, Hridaya Adikavaye. Hmm? He infused the Adikavi, Brahma, hmm? the original knower, learned person, Kavi, knower of the Vedas, and so forth, uh, infused within his heart spiritual insight. 
Tene Brahma. The context, of course, is uh, that uh, Brahma was searching out his source. He heard the sound, tapa, the two syllables. He performed the uh, austerity, which in this context means bhakti. Hmm? Bhakti is a kind of uh, austerity or sacrifice. And the fruit, fruit of his sacrifice was that Krishna manifested in his heart and gave him instructions. And this is where the Chatur Shloka comes from. It appears in the Bhagavatam that, that, that Narayan is appearing, or perhaps Krishna of Dwaraka. Hmm? But we find in other texts, like Gopal Tapani, Upanishad, Brahma Samhita, that Krishna appeared before Brahma, instructed him, gave him the mantra, and so forth. So, in the least, Krishna manifests. He may have come as Narayan, or Dwarakesh Krishna, but then manifest as Krishna. In Gopavesh, He's identified particularly in this way by his dress in uh, Gopal Tapani, Gopavesh, in the, in the dress of a Gopa. So that's not Narayan. Hmm? And of course, the Bhagavatam says he reached out and shook his hand, as Prabhupada translates it. Hmm? Shook hands with him, touched his hand. Hmm? Um, mm, He didn't say he embraced him with four arms. <laughs> uh, Gopal Tapani does have him in the Gyan Mudra, hmm, giving knowledge, although in Gopavesh. This is arguably why Brahma could not identify him later on when he appeared in the Brahma Vimohan Lila in the Braj, when instead of standing before uh, or sitting before uh, Brahma in the Gyan Mudra, hmm, how's the Gyan Mudra like, uh, like, like this, right? Like like this, like this, or like this, or like this. I bless you. you know, I'm giving knowledge. Um, he appeared, so that's okay. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and he, uh, but, <laughs> but when he saw him in the Brahma Vimohan Lila, he was sitting with his friends in a circle. He had in his hand, left hand, yogurt, fruit, and rice. He's eating it putting in his cowherd friend's mouth. They're putting food prepared by Jashoda Mai in their mouth. And he's, they're taking it from their mouth and putting it in his mouth. They're saying, oh, this is really good. Taste it. Here, you, you taste it. And Brahma's coming in on his swan carrier and he's seeing this and, he's, and the universe is all in a commotion about Krishna has just killed Hagasura. And he's thinking, what? Who is this? I, this looks similar to that guy I saw, my guru, but he's, in a, he's sure looking different right now. Must be an imposter. Hmm? So he tries to test him and so forth. And of course, Krishna shows extraordinary Aishwarya and what is the place of Vrindavan and uh, what, what the fruit really of the mantra, the fruit, the real, the fruit of the, 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 the end, be all and end all of the knowledge that he gave in the form of the mantra and those instructions that it culminates in Braj Bhakti. Hmm? This is what Chaitanya Sampradaya wants to bring out in this chapter sloka. Hmm? Uh, so that is not brought out when it's first cited in Chaitanya Charitamrita. He cites it just to say, just as evidence, that Krishna enlightens within the heart. Hmm? He's the original guru. Hmm? But it's it's also very interesting that he should place such important verses that are considered the essence of the Bhagavatam, right at the beginning of his book, Chaitanya Charitamrita. Although they're ostensibly cited only for evidence that, no, see, Krishna enlightens within the heart. He's the original guru. What is he saying there is very significant. Krishna does, doesn't unpack it there and so forth, but we can't help but assume that he felt very comfortable placing the essence of the Bhagavatam in four shlokas right at the onset of his book, which is the distilled essence of Srimad Bhagavatam itself. Hmm? Then later, uh, and, and it's, 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 it's very valuable for us, very useful for us, very fruitful for us to speak about this Chatur Shloka before speaking directly about its significance by way of speaking about its place in Gaur Lila. Hmm? Because we want to always defer to Gaur Lila uh, uh, in pursuing, uh, attempting to speak about Krishna Lila. This is, as Krishna Skaviras Goswami has said, the fountain 
Gaur Leela, from which Krishna Leela flows in all directions. Pujapachita Maharaj, liking that verse of Chaitanya Charitamrita, coined the phrase, first the giver, then the gift. Hmm. Our honor, we go to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, hmm. the giver of the gift of Krishna Bhakti. Prabhupada put it like this when he said of his three temples that he worked hard to establish, Bombay, Mayapur, and Vrindavan. He said, Bombay is my office. Hmm. And uh, Mayapur is my place of worship and Vrindavan is my home. Hmm. So worship in, in Mayapur means worship Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, live in Vrindavan. Hmm. That's the fact. We talked about this to some extent last night. The worship of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Dasya Bhakti uh, results in finding a place uh, making a place for yourself, uh, having a place for yourself, bestowed entry into Krishna Leela. Hmm? So, uh, it's, it's, it's useful, so it's important and appropriate. Hmm? Uh, this is the one, then, context in which we find the Chatur Shlok in Chaitanya Charitamrita, which is the essence, so, and arguably, of all the Goswami's books. Hmm? I said it before that they wrote in Sanskrit and Krishna was commissioned to rewrite them all, essentially, in uh, in Bengali and give them to the people at large who didn't speak uh, Sanskrit and take it back to Bengal. Hmm? Goswami's books written in Vrindavan take their realization, their insight as to what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu really is all about. Now send it back to to to, to Bengal, where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared, and people's heads just spinning. What's he about? We love him. We don't care. He might be this. He might be. And, and you find in Chaitanya Bhagavat different devotees are seeing him in different ways, and so forth and so on. And different texts written about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appreciating him to one extent or another. Some appreciations not uh, honored by the Goswamis, others honored. And Chaitanya Charitamrita is the book to sort that out, so to speak. Hmm? Um, so it's in the spirit of Chaitanya Charitamrita in the sense that we go on with this sampradaya of glorifying and explaining Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the local, local vernacular with examples from the local uh, area and so forth to help bring home the points. Hmm? So, this is the first place. The second place that the Chatur Shlok, Shloki is found in, Bhagavata, in Chaitanya Charitamrita is in the context of the narrative of the Leela um, that appears later in the Madhya Leela. This is a Leela that appears also in the uh, Adi Leela. It's very curious to note that after Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami gives his Mangal Charn, his, his verses, his auspicious sacred preface to his book, hmm, then he explains them at length over... Uh, six uh, and a half chapters, hmm? suddenly he begins to speak about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leela in Banares, hmm? mm-hmm. where he met Sanatana Goswami, where he began to enlighten Prakashananda Saraswati, uh, the great Advaitin and opposer who criticized Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and so forth. Hmm? After describing that Leela, hmm, Krishna Kaviraj goes on to describe how he came to write the book Chaitanya Charitamrita, and uh, then he introduces the various players, if you will, in the drama of Chaitanya Leela, the branches of the figurative tree of, the, of, of, of Bhakti, the branch of Nityananda, the branch of Advaita, the branch of Gadadhar, and so forth, and uh, so just a list of different devotees. And these are all players that will show up later on in the book as the drama begins with about chapter 13, the advent of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That's where the Leela is officially starts to uh, unfold. He's, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is prayed for. Uh, there's a preface. He takes his birth. There's the Gorpurim and so on and so forth. He grows up. He says it's not a Leela. He moves on, takes sannyas and travels widely. Then he retires in Puri and enters to internal life deeply and so on and so forth. Hmm? 
Madilila and Tilila. But curiously, this story of the, the deliverance of Prakashananda Saraswati is just kind of appears in, 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 a, in the, uh, before the narrative begins and appears later on in some greater detail towards the end of the Madilila, hmm? where it fits in, so to speak, with a kind of a, a how you say, chronological uh, order uh, of the uh, uh, events in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's life. It doesn't fit in chronologically in this place, but it's a it's a it's a very strong. Um, it constitutes in, in the teaching that's contained there a very strong opposition to Mayavad. Hmm? It's almost as if the author Krishna Kaviraj is saying, "You can't enter Vrindavan until we get this out of the way. Let's get it out of the way right now." Hmm? My book is not about this. Hmm? You know, the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was on his way to Vrindavan. And he stopped in, in Benares. There he began to defeat Prakashanda Saraswati, uh, so to speak. But Rupa Goswami had gone on to Vrindavan, was waiting for him. So he put that on hold. He went to Vrindavan, had Rupa Goswami's association, came back fortified from that. And the Vrindavan uh, uh, environment, and then he returned to Benares and fully delivered Prakashananda Saraswati. He is a, the big uh, the big Mayavadi. In Chaitanya Bhagavad, we find Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in early in his, his Leela and Nadia saying, ah, and somebody says he has no head, God has no head, he has no face, he has no eyes, he has no arms, hmm? he has no legs. Yeah. What kind of glorification is this? I will kill that man. I will, you know, I will slay him, something like that, in some kind of madness. This was the Prakashananda Sarsi, a big important person in the in, in the in the leelas of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's deliverance. Hmm? Uh, so, uh, in the second narrative of this same leela, where it fits chronologically hmm, in the uh, in the Madhya leela. We find Chaitanya Mahaprabhu invokes these four verses of Srimad Bhagavatam. Hmm? Prakashananda has been enlightened. He's he, he, he surrendered. He's um, accepted Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as as, as 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 the personality of Godhead, and he begins to ask questions. And he's a he's a he's a he's a gyani, uh, and so he he, he Mahaprabhu has um, not f- taken much pleasure. In Prakashananda's typical explanation of the Brahma Sutras, mm-hmm. and uh, Prakashananda has surrendered, but then he wants to hear Mahaprabhu say something about the Brahma Sutras and how 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 do you explain them, hmm? uh, and so forth. So Mahaprabhu begins to explain, hmm? and of course he goes quickly to the Bhagavatam, and he says the easy way to explain these sutras, of course is to go to the Bhagavatam because Vyasa wrote the sutras and after writing the sutras he wrote the Bhagavatam in his Samadhi Bhasha, the language of his trance. Hmm? And so the Bhagavatam, as the Garuda Purana says, Artoyam Brahma Sutranam is a natural commentary on the sutras. Natural means that the author of the sutras has written the Bhagavatam as well. It's his final work after the sutras. In other words, all the texts are, are said to be a manifest, and then Vyas tries to theologize about this revelu- revelation in the in the Brahma Sutras or Vedanta Sutra. It's a kind of a, an attempt to show the concordance of all the different diverse statements of the Upanishads and, whatnot, and how they are speaking in a concerted way and making one conclusive uh, point. Hmm? Giving the direction direction to humanity that it might find it realize its highest, highest prospect and so forth, hmm? but it's written like a shorthand. Hmm? It's almost like he took, took took notes and in the long hand explanation that is Srimad Bhagavatam. Hmm? Shruti Sarvam Hikam, the very essence of the Shruti, as Bhagavatam explains itself to be. So. Mahaprabhu quickly, in his discussion with Prakashananda Saraswati, 
Prakasana Saraswati goes to the Bhagavatam. He says, we'll go. If you want to understand the sutras, go to the Bhagavatam. If we go to the Bhagavatam, let's go to the four verses of Srimad Bhagavatam, the Chatur Shloki. Hmm? This is the essence of the Vedanta Sutra. This is the essence of the Bhagavatam. Hmm? And it deals with three basic th- three basic things. And we'll hear, probably tomorrow night, when Brahma's questions, Brahma's questions foster, promote, uh, require three answers. Hmm. Answers about Sambandha, about Abhideya Tattva, about Prayojan Tattva, hmm. which Mahaprabhu said, this is, these are the three subjects of the sacred text. This is, if you study this, you see, this is not Mayavad philosophy. Hmm. There's no Sambandha <laughs> in Mayavad philosophy. There's no relationship. Brahma Satya, but what do they say? Um, not that one. Sarvam kolo vidam brahma. Everything is Brahman. Siddhamar said, yes, everything is Brahman. There are a lot of things, and they're all Brahman. It's not that everything is Brahman means there's only Brahman and no no, no things, <laughs> something like that. There's many things hmm, that are in there are innumerable things. Things may not be the best word to use, but what are those things? Parasya Shakti Vibhaiva Shuyate. There is Brahman and has innumerable Shaktis. This makes for relationships. This Shakti does by this Shakti he does this, by this Shakti he does that. He remains whole. He's not transformed, but by his Shaktis he creates different transformations. And so there are things going on, and they're all Brahman, and they're all not Brahman. This kind of says, Sambandha, and Abhideya. Abhideya means that, 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 there's, that there's a means. You ever hear these, these neo Advaitins saying, there's nothing to practice. You're already enlightened. Just be. Then you say, Swamiji, I was wondering how I could. That's the problem. You're thinking how you could. Stop thinking how. Be. And everybody would go, oh. Huh. So, Amaji, I was, I, I, you, can, you can ask it. I, <laughs> I was wondering. <laughs> you've said this, and then you've said that over there. That's the problem. Questions. Hmm. There are no questions. There's only answer. One answer. B, you are. And this kind of thing. <laughs> oh, they have nothing to say by their own philosophy. Hmm. Uh, uh, so there's really, what is the Abhideya? I mean, there is a means in Gyan Marg, but it's, it's, it's not uh, like a means in Bhakti. We also say in Bhakti, Krishna Prem Nityasiddha Sadhika Bonoi. Shavanadi Sutta Chitte, what you want already is. Hmm? Your prospect in bhakti already is. That Baba is eternally existing. That's a fact. It's not something that's created in time or anything like that. But whether it will descend into you of its own free will, that's, that's, another, that's another thing. Hmm? So anyway, Abhide and Prayojan. Prayojan means the fruit, what is to be attained, and so forth. So if you understand these terms, you see that they don't really apply in the context of the uh, Advaitin and the classical Shankar's Mayavad uh, philosophy that Prakashananda was steeped in. So Mahaprabhu wants to say, let's go here and these are the three, this, this is what we find here. This is the essence of the Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam is the essence of all real scriptures. So these are the subjects of the sacred text. Sambandha, Abhideya, and Prayojana. Hmm? A kind of a key to understanding the various statements of the scripture, categorizing in these three different uh, tattvas. Hmm? How things are related, hmm? and understanding that a certain acti- type of action is fostered, that is, that, that is bhakti, and that will foster a certain type of result. Hmm? So these are the basic subjects, and Mahaprabhu, in explaining the Chatur Shlok and Chaitanya Charitamrita, is a bit reserved compared to later-day commentators who want to draw out so much more Gaudiya 
um, insights, Rasik insights, and so forth. This was not something to do uh, in that assembly when Prakashananda Saraswati is just coming out of the Mahayabad uh, Advaitin world. Basically, Mahaprabhu explained the Chatur Shloki there as a means of um, demonstrating that the Bhagavatam is not about uh, the erroneous idea that Atma and Paramatma, Atma and Brahman, are one absolutely in all respects. The jiva is an illusion. The world is an illusion. This is the Maya Bhattva. It's not about that. Hmm? So he invokes it to further cement, if you will, Prakashana Saraswati into a bhakti uh, orientation to life. This is a difficult thing to, it's kind of like wanting to take the foundation out of Prakashananda's whole spiritual idea. Hmm? Uh, so that's, you know, you got to jack up the house and pull out the foundation and put another one in. So this is a very, Im- anyway, the point is this is very important. Hmm? And uh, again, you can't, the idea is in one sense, you can't enter into Vrindavan without dealing with this Mayavad and getting it out of the way. That's why Prabhupada was so bent on making this point. It's very true, in a way, to in a sense, to Chaitanya Charitamrita I and mean, the thrust there. Hmm? We find Prabhupada going out of his way in his commentary on verses to pick a fight with Mayavad philosophy. And you think, well, it's getting a little sectarian, maybe, you know, it's a little over the top. But he was very much convinced, and rightfully so, that there's no, there will be no devotees hmm, of Krishna that we can harvest here or, or culture or, or um, convert or awaken or collect unless this Mayavad idea is uh, exposed. In some ways he did it simplistically, in other places he did it more uh, comprehensively and so forth. But the Chatur Shlok lends itself very well to um, uh, explaining that this Bhagavatam is not about Advaita Vedanta. It's not about Mayavad. It's, it's a, arguably Ved Ved, Veda Ved, Achinta Veda Ved. And so, as I say, Prabhupada, this is one of the thrusts of Prabhupada. The other thrust, I would say, Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam. Hmm? Krishna's Swayam Bhagavan and Mayavad is, is, is something that we should not entertain. You cannot enter into Vrindavan and this will, this will be a great impediment to bhakti. Hmm? So we find, this, as I say, the same approach in a sense in Chaitanya Charitamrita and this is the way in which we find these verses in the great tome Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. And now we'll go on tomorrow night to speak more about them in Brahma's verses that that uh, constitute his inquiries that Krishna replies to and the implications of them and so forth. Are there any questions? I had the book ready to speak from Brahma's first question, but the introduction was uh, to precedence, it seems. What is the time? 7.40. 740, okay. We're a little late, then we'll stop there. Grantara Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Tauji Gopal ki jai. Bhaktarinda ki jai. Bhaktarinda ki jai.